What's going on, YouTube family? It's your favorite student doctor again. It's Paige and Dr. Q. Thank you, thank you, thank you for stumbling onto my channel. If you're a subscriber, thank you, thank you so much. Um, this is a new series I'm starting called Overcoming the Odds. But before I get into what Overcoming the Odds are, or what it's going to be, I just want to take this moment to thank everybody who's already subscribed to my channel. I just recently started my channel because I have a yearning to help all those who have a dream, a dream that includes healthcare, a dream to be healthier, anything that I have some knowledge on, I wanna share. I want to help you grow because I know that you guys can help me grow and become better. So the people who have clicked subscribe, um, I don't know exactly right now how many of, there, of you there are. There aren't many, but I appreciate every single one of you guys and you guys have no idea the amount of motivation and encouragement that you guys provide me to keep these videos coming. As you can see, I'm keeping the content coming. If you haven't already, I have two day in the life videos already, episode one and episode two. Episode three is dropping very soon, guys. It's um, I just came back from spring break back home in Miami. That's where I'm from. Um, I'm back in Georgia where I go to medical school for those who are new. And so I got the I'm in Miami episode three day in the life of medical student coming up. But go ahead and click and watch some of my other videos. I got seven videos up all informative if you feel like one connects to you please go watch it please click, click a like if you are new please subscribe i promise you i got the content coming i'm gonna keep great videos coming i want to help you guys achieve your dreams i want to see you guys succeed i hope you want the same for me so yeah go ahead and click subscribe it's going to be up there so now to what this is this is a new series that i'm starting called overcoming the odds now Everybody knows that this medical school journey is tough. Getting into medical school is one of the toughest things you can do. So this series is gonna be dedicated to my pre-meds. So all my people who are currently in medical school, please feel free to watch, drop a comment that you feel is helpful, add any tips that you feel can help the pre-med viewers, and check out some of my other videos that apply to us who are currently in medical school. But overcoming the odds is basically like it sounds. It's about showing you how you can overcome whatever down points in your application or whatever weaknesses um, in your application or in your um, on your journey to becoming a physician or to getting into medical school um, and hopefully succeed. So this first installment, episode one of Overcoming the Odds is five steps that you can take, real easy steps that you can take to help improve your MCAT score. Even if you have a poor MCAT score, these are five easy steps that if you're not doing that I guarantee you if you do these things, they will improve your MCAT score, all right? So these are from this is from our pre-meds. I'm gonna keep the Overcoming the Odds series coming. The next is gonna be how to counteract a poor GPA. So here we go, here goes nothing. Again, thank you guys for subscribing. It's Paige and Dr. Q, stay tuned. Here we go, tip number one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad that you guys are still with me. Okay, tip number one for improving your MCAT score, guys. All right, I know the MCAT is an overwhelming and daunting test it's the bane of everybody's existence who wants to go to medical school it sucks but you can minimize the stress and the feeling of being overwhelmed by first things first guys you have to create a study schedule i know we believe in ourselves and we believe in our ability to stay organized and to basically knock certain things out um but trust me the most effective way to get the optimum amount of studying and still be stressed, a little less stressed, a little less overwhelmed, still balance your life out is to create a study schedule. And by that, you have to keep in mind two things. One is you have to make sure you've set up enough time to tackle everything you need to tackle on the test. So all the objectives have to be addressed in creating your study schedule. That's number one. Number two, you have to be ambitious but realistic guys that's so important now when we're when we're setting up our schedule we might overemphasize or you know over exaggerate what we think we can do in a day you know maybe you say oh i can read you know three chapters in my kaplan book or i can watch five videos in that day you have to really take a self-reflective look at yourself and say is this really what i can do in this day now some great apps cram fighter um awesome 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 app um, I'll try to link the website down below. Um, this basically helps you set up a schedule. You just put what resources or what, um, basically what items you want to get through and your time frame, and it'll set it up 
and split it up in a timely fashion for you based upon what you feel like you can give in, in a given day towards that subject matter. So number one, guys, you have to create a schedule. Do not go in blind. Do not go in rogue without a schedule. You have to study a schedule. That way you can stay on top of your game, stay organized, and get through the material in an optimum amount of time. That's number one. Tip number two, guys, this might seem very simple, but a lot of people do not do this. Tip number two is focus on your weakness. See, what we like to do, and us med students do it all the time, everybody does it, is sometimes, although we know and we've already identified what our weak point is, let's just say that's the chemistry for you or orgo or psych or whatever the portion or whatever subject on the MCAT is weak for you, Let's say we've identified this, but we still don't emphasize it. We still study things that we're comfortable with, topics that we feel good about because it boosts our confidence. You know, this material is tough and it's tough to get through. So whenever we get a chance where we can actually get a few answers right on the test, or we can work on a subject and iron and sharpen a subject that we feel good about, it makes us feel good. It makes us feel like we're actually doing something, but we have to get away from that, guys. Because likelihood is, if you're already strong in a particular subject or a particular section in this case, you are going to do decently well. You are going to get a score or around a score that is suitable for your goal ultimately, which means put that stuff to the side. You can review it later. If you're good at it, if you're, re if you're receiving a score that you're satisfied with, don't touch it, guys. Trust me, if you're receiving a score that you're satisfied with, don't touch that subject any longer until you fully, fully, fully tackled your weakest area. What this is gonna do is help you get the optimal score possible. Let's say um, you're doing very well in the physics or the chemistry or the biology section, but you're doing very well in the other aspects of the test. You need to put everything you're good at to the side, focus on your weak point, and trust me, your score will be optimal. Do not worry, you're not gonna forget what you're strong at at least not to a degree that it's gonna impact you negatively, as opposed to if you focus on your weak point, you can spend more time on it, you can maximize on your time, you can optimize your score. That's tip number two. If you guys are still with me, thank you. I hope I'm helping. I hope we're making some progress, and trust me, you guys can ask me questions or ask me to clarify any of the points I'm making. I'm just giving you a, just brief overarching things that you could do today to really help improve your score. Now, tip number three, guys. <clears throat> Minimize your resources. Minimize your resources. Any more than three resources that you're using is too much. You want to master the resources that you have. For the most part, all the resources are fairly good. You know, they're going to give you enough adequate information for you to be successful in that particular section. Now, you want to master the resources that you have instead of trying to learn a million and one different things, whether it be watching Kaplan videos and then listening to uh, listening to the audio files and then reading the textbook. Some of that can be a little bit overkill. Or if you have Kaplan and then Princeton Review and then whatever other question bank and doing both, all of those, you know, for the most part, they all are coming from the same angle. They're all coming from the same perspective, guys. So pick three resources, pick three tops, all right? Three things that you really feel give you a nice flow and a steady ease of studying and master those three. Only work with those three. Trust me, do not listen to your friends about what you need this. You got your three. You got your weapons and you have to become an expert at using those three weapons. I can't tell you what they are because they're gonna be different for everybody. Some people are gonna like question banks. Some people are gonna like to watch videos. Some people are gonna be visual learners. Some people are gonna like to read. Whatever is good for you, pick three maximum. It could be less than three, but no more than three. Trust me. Guys, tip number four is the most important tip. I know you. it, it would seem like tip five should be the most important tip, but it's number four. Practice test. I'm just gonna let that marinate. Practice test is the key to doing well on this MCAT or any standardized examination. Practice tests give you a view of what you really know and they provide a context for what you're studying. When you're reading a textbook, you're just looking at a bunch of information. 
a bunch of information that you can't really apply to answering a question because you haven't seen a question. So the practice tests provide a context for your studying, which is essential. Honestly, the more practice tests you can do, the better. I personally believe that practice tests help you <clears throat> more than anything else because one, they mimic the actual examination, what you're actually gonna see, especially if you time yourself, um, if you s set up the same similar room format, um, computer, just like you would on a normal testing day, it mimics the environment, it gets you ready, it gets your mind flowing, it puts you in the frame of mind where you have to think of how you have to answer these questions, how you can actually apply what you're learning in the textbook to what you need to know to answer these questions. I assure you, the more practice tests you can get knocked out, the better. So in your schedule, set it up so that you can do as many practice tests that are available to you as possible. Even alone, I guarantee you, if you even if you don't do anything else, but increase your number of practice tests you take, your score will get better. Now you have to review the test after you're done taking it, see what you're going you're doing wrong consistently, recognize patterns and address those things. But if you do the practice test, the more you do, the better you get the better you will do on this test. Guys, last but not least, thank you for sticking with me. I hope the four tips so far have been helpful. I don't want this video to be too long. Like I said, if you have more specific questions you wanna ask me, and this comes from somebody who took the MCAT personally twice. The first time I did not do very well. Second time I followed the tips that I'm telling you guys and I improved my score significantly. So I'm only telling you guys things that I've experienced myself. So if you have any specific questions that relate to your personal story, feel free to shoot me a message. I will get back to you as quickly as possible, okay? Thank you. But the last tip, guys, is one. It's kind of two tips combined together. One, is do not compare yourself to any of your other classmates, to anybody else taking this test. In addition to that, do not get discouraged. You guys know this is a revolving principle for me. One, I say don't compare yourself because everybody is different. Everybody's approach is different, and that's essentially a good thing, you know? This is what makes you you. So your approach, your style of learning is personal to you. So you have to listen to yourself, you have to listen to your own heart on this, guys. People are gonna tell you this is how you need to study, this is what you need to do, and it can ultimately bring you down a path that is not best suited for you. So when you feel comfortable with something, and trust me, you'll know, you'll start studying a particular textbook, you'll start looking at a particular book or a particular video, a particular cue bank, and it'll feel comfortable to you. Go with it, follow that. Now, if it's not working, you have to be the person to say, I need to make an adjustment. That's about, that's what growth is truly about. Do not do the same thing twice if it's ineffective. But you gotta listen to yourself. That's, that's number one of, of part five. Five B is do not get discouraged, guys. It was, if it was meant to be easy, everybody would do it. Everybody would ace it. It's a standardized test. It's meant to judge us. It's meant to us for, to, to give them a, a way to gain whether or not we're suitable for medical school because you're gonna have to take standardized tests all throughout this journey. So it's not meant to be intimidating, although it really is. It's meant to just touch your fortitude. It's meant to test your durability, um, test your stamina. So the more of that you have, the more courage you have, the more self-encouragement that you possess, the better you will do, trust me, because you will put forth the amount of energy and the amount of time needed to be successful. I hope this helped, guys. I'm trying not to make the video too long. Shoot me a message if you need me. If you have any specific questions, I got you. It's Paige and Dr. Q. Look out for episode three of the Day in the Life. I'm in Miami. I'm back in Georgia now, but I was in Miami for that episode. Um, watch some of my other videos, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you're already not subscribed. Best of luck. Make it a great day, guys. I hope you achieve your dreams. It's Paige and Dr. Q, and we out.